In this video, we're going to talk about how to complete the square. So if you're given a quadratic like x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0, and you want to solve this equation by completing the square, the first step is to get the variables on one side of the equation and the numbers on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides of this equation. And if we do that, we're left with x squared plus 6x equals 7. Now what you want to do is you want to take the coefficient, the number in front of the x to the first term, and you want to divide that by 2 and square it. So we take 6 divided by 2, and we square that quantity. So that's going to be 3 squared, which is equals 9. So what we want to do is we want to add 9 to the left side of the equation as well as to the right side of the equation to keep it balanced. Now what we can do is we can factor this left side of the equation, and it's going to be a perfect square. And the way you factor this is going to be x, and it'll always be half of this middle coefficient. So half of 6 is going to be positive 3. If this was minus 6x, then it would be negative 3. And that equals 16. So now we've completed the square. The next part to solve it would be then to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And when you do that, you get two answers. You get plus or minus 4. And this is going to just be x plus 3 because the square and the square root cancel. So now what you can do uh, is you can go ahead and split this into two equations. So I would write this as x plus 3 is equal to positive 4 and x plus 3 is equal to negative 4. So if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x equals 1. And here, if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x equals negative 7. And those are our two solutions. Now, that was an easy problem because we had a leading coefficient of 1. But how would you do a little bit more difficult problem, say, for example, like this? 5x squared minus 10x minus 15 equals 0. Well, be, see this leading coefficient, this 5 in front? What you want to do is you want to divide everything by 5. Okay, so this way it's a little bit easier to complete the square. So now you have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. I would move that constant to the other side. By doing the opposite, I would add 3. So now we have x squared minus 2x equals 3. And then to complete the square, we take a half of that middle coefficient, half of that number in front of the x, and we square it. So sometimes I like to do that work off to the side. So negative 2 divided by 2 and squared. So that's going to be negative 1 squared, which is equal to 1. So if we add 1 to the left side, we want to keep that balance and add 1 to the right side. The left side of the equation, when we do this completing the square, it becomes a perfect square, okay, or a binomial squared. And the way you factor that, remember, it's always going to be half of that middle coefficient. So in this case, instead of uh, negative 2, we're going to take half of that. It's going to be x minus 1, the quantity squared, equals 4. If you want to check your work, you can write this twice, x minus 1 times x minus 1, and FOIL it, and you'll get back the x squared minus 2x plus 1. But now we've completed the square. All we need to do is take the square root of both sides of the equation. That's going to give us, remember, two answers, plus or minus 2. The square and the square root cancel. And I'm going to show you another method on this problem. Instead of uh, splitting it up into two equations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. And when I do that, what you're going to see is that this is going to be plus 1, plus 1, so that's going to be x equals 1 plus or minus 2. So notice I put that adding 1, I put that plus 1 in front of the plus or minus. You don't want to put it over here on the right. And so now we have two problems to solve. 1 plus 2 is, of course, 3, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And those are going to be our two solutions to that one. The third example I want to show you now involves some fractions. So a little bit more challenging example. We've got negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 1 equals 0. And what we want to do here is we want to, again, get that leading coefficient to be positive 1. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. It makes it easier to complete the square. Of course, 0 divided by negative 2 is still going to be 0. This is going to be 1 half. This is going to be negative 5 halves. 
okay, and then this is going to be just uh, these cancel. It just gives us positive x squared. So now what I would do is I would uh, get the number on the other side by subtracting one half from both sides of the equation, and that's going to give us x squared minus five halves equals negative one half. So here's the completing uh, the square part. What we want to do is we want to take half of negative five over two and square it. Now when you take half of something, you can divide it by two or you can multiply it by one half. So in this case, this comes out to negative five fourths squared, which is 25 sixteenths. So we're going to add 25 sixteenths to the right side of the equation and we're going to add 25 sixteenths to the left side to keep it balanced. So now we just have to factor the left side and remember when you factor it's going to be a perfect square. So it's going to be x and then half of this middle coefficient so is going to be x minus 5 over 4. I just multiplied this by 1 half. On the right side though we have to get a common denominator so it looks like if we multiply the numerator and denominator by 8 that's going to give us negative 8 sixteenths plus 25 sixteenths which is equal to uh, let's see, 17 sixteenths. Okay, now we've completed the square. All we need to do is solve by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. And remember, when you do that, you get your two answers. Of course, square root of 17 we can't simplify, but the square root of uh, 16 is just going to be 4. And then here, the square and the square root cancel one another out. We just are left with x minus 5 fourths. And the last thing to do now is really just to get the x by itself. So I'm going to add 5 fourths to both sides of the equation. And remember, what you want to do is you want to put that 5 fourths in front of the plus or minus. So it's going to be 5 fourths plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. And you can do this on your calculator or you can leave it like this as an exact answer.